Okay, what I really want to do is to give a bit of commentary on the census data that's come out. If you don't know what I'm talking about, we had a census here in the UK last year. We have one every 10 years, and they always ask questions on your religious affiliation. That's the question that they ask amongst many other questions. It is apparently the only voluntary question uh, that, that's on the census and about 7% of people didn't answer the question. They've kind of ignored that 7% so that all the figures, and these are figures for England and Wales, are out of 100%. So it's out of the people that did respond to the question. There's quite a lot of data on the Office of National Statistics uh, website including a YouTube video. I'm going to play a clip from that actually halfway through this just to emphasize a particular point they're making and I might include a couple of the stills from that video as well. What I want to do is just tell you what the data is um, and then I want to just explain a little bit about how the questions asked and what they're looking for and then uh, what I want to do is just cut and also go over a couple of confounding factors with regard to immigration and, and, and uh, emigration there and then compare it to the British Social Attitude Survey which takes place at about the same time 2000 instead of 2001 for the census 2010 for the BSA instead of 2011 asking questions to do with religiosity for the census again so this is the headline figures then let me give you the headline figures in 2001 72 percent of the population of england and wales saw themselves as affiliated to christianity they answered the question what is your religion uh, with the answer christian in 2011 only 59 percent of respondents gave the same answer that's a drop of 13 percent there from 72 to 59. Islam, 3% in 2001, 4.8% in 2011. I've no doubt some of that is to do with, with net immigration, which I'll just touch upon in a second. No religion went from 7.7 .7 million to 14.1 uh, million respondents as a percentage of the population of England and Wales. That's gone from 15% to get this 25%, that's a, not just a 10% increase, but if you think of that in proportional terms, it's like a 66% a, a increase on the original figure. I think that's a huge difference in a 10 year time span. Immigration confounds the issue a little bit. We, we, we the, the population increase in the period was 3.7 million. That included 3.8 million people uh, immigrating into the country, uh, two point sorry, three point eight million people immigrating into the country, uh, a, a substantial number of people as well migrating out of the country. The net immigration figure was two point one million. If you think about it, religiosity is quite low in the UK compared to many other countries, including the countries that people are migrating in from. So I would suggest to you that we're actually. Um, bringing people in or people are coming in that are more religious than the people who are leaving. The figures for Poland went from something like in 2001 less than 100,000 to about 600,000 in 2011. The Polish are generally considerably uh, more religious. They're, they're ardent Christians, many of them compared to the uh, average person within the United Kingdom. So, so that increase in number of people that were born in Poland is going to have cushioned some of the effect on Christianity. Similarly, the next two biggest uh, uh, countries in terms of, of alternative country of birth were India and Pakistan. Of course, you've got a substantial number of, he of Hindus and Muslims in India and also Sikhs and, of course, Muslims in Pakistan. So maybe that accounts for the shift in figures uh, for Islam. What I take from that is if you were to take the migration uh, aspect out of it, you would have seen an even bigger rise in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the proportion of people who professed no uh, religious affiliation and an even bigger decrease in the percentage of people who professed an affiliation to Christianity. I need to give you a little bit of background now as to the way the question is phrased uh, with regard to 
uh, the census because a lot of people take this to mean that well if 70 so 59 percent of people profess an affiliation to christianity then that means that they are christians who believe in god that is not what it means and the census makes this quite clear this is perhaps the best time to play you this little clip uh, from the youtube video from the office of national statistics on this Using these people, we will start by looking at the breakdown of religious affiliation, how we connect or identify with a religion, irrespective of actual practice or belief. Okay, so I think it is important to try and understand what they're trying to do with the census. The census provides data for the government and for local authorities, and it provides them with the kind of data that they need. It's not done for our benefit to provide us with the answers that we're necessarily interested in. Now, it turns out that what the government are really interested in and what the local authorities are interested in is people's religious affiliation. They couldn't really give much of a crap whether you actually believe in God or not if you feel some kind of social connection with Christianity then that's what they're interested in they're not interested in whether or not you believe that Jesus Christ was the son of God or anything like that you don't have to believe in God if you feel that it, that affiliation with Christianity then as far as they're concerned they're a Christian they've made that quite clear that is what they are trying to measure and that is why despite the protestations from various groups in the UK they have stuck by uh, asking the question in the same format as they are asked the previous time and the question they asked was the very simple one what is your religion you can contrast that with you with the uh, British social attitude survey which asks the question I've written it on the back of this piece of paper do you regard yourself as belonging to a particular religion when they ask that question they get a very uh, different answer but i think that's an important point this is just an important point to remember so when people use the census data uh, as some kind of claim that well this shows how many people believe in god in the uk it does absolutely nothing of the sort the trends that we're talking about here are significant i think uh, but they're trends in terms of affiliation not whether or not people believe in god so that's something that I would ask you to bear in mind. So what about the similar data then? What kind of data did we get from the British Social Attitudes Survey? Well, I'll tell you about that right now. Let me tell you, I'll give you links to all of this. I'll give you links to the YouTube video from the Office of National Statistics that deal with this part of the census. I'll give you a link to the Office of National Statistics uh, uh, part to do with this uh, part of the census in its entirety so you can have a look through that and I'll also give you a link to the British Social Attitudes survey so that you can read some very very interesting stuff that they've got within that survey that was done in 2010 regarding uh, whether people what religion people actually believe in so they asked the question in a different way whereas in 2011 25 percent of people put no religion uh, on the census in the British Social Attitude Survey in 2010, when they asked the question but asked it in this way to try and determine people's actual religiosity rather than affiliation to a religion, instead of 25%, they got a figure of 50%. So, they, so it actually gave an inc incredibly different result there. And that consisted 56%, there was a gender difference, a sex difference, 56% of men said no religion, 45% of women said no religion. Another very interesting statistic for those of you that live in the United States, of course, your, politi your politics is quite polarised with the, with the Republicans, uh, a much more religious party than the Democrats. In fact, looking at statistics on that, quite a, a perhaps by far the biggest chunk of the religious uh, in terms of percentage uh, within the Democrats was that people, African Americans, uh, seem to ally themselves more with the Democrats and that it was their religiosity that, 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 that formed quite a substantial chunk of the religiosity there. But the figures were quite different. The figures that I saw was uh, for the no religion camp was something like 14% with the Republicans, 28% with the Democrats. I think it was something uh, like that. Compare that to these figures we have three parties here 
The Conservatives are the right-wing party, the Labour Party are the left-wing party, although I would suggest that probably the Conservatives here are probably about where the Democrats are uh, in the United States because there is that shift in the sort of the political landscape between the two countries. And then there's the Liberal Democrats, which uh, if you they're a left-wing party as well, but I suppose the Liberal Democrats are kind of I think of them as a kind of middle class uh, liberal left wing party whereas uh, the Labour Party is more a working class socialist left wing party so these are the figures then for the Conservatives the right wingers 44% of, of them declared no religion in the British Social Attitude Survey for the Labour Party it was 46% so there was virtually no difference whatsoever it was only in the liberal democrats which you'd like i say you'd perhaps think more of a sort of middle class liberal left-wing party their figure was 55 percent declared no religion but there you go for the two main parties left-wing and right-wing party the difference in religiosity was only or, or declaring no religion was only two percent there which i thought was quite interesting Okay, another really interesting thing, and this will probably be the last one that I go through, is that the British Social Attitude Survey, this is fascinating stuff, this bit, they looked at and thought, well, what is the reason for this decline in religiosity? So they, they put people in terms of cohorts, age bands, going every 10 years. I think it was something like 18 to 27, then 28 to 37, something like that. And it was clear then, because they are asking the same questions every 10 years over an extended periods of time over many decades they could look at the statistics and this is what they found in any particular survey be it in 2010 2019 90 whenever whenever they conducted the survey uh, the youngest cohort always had the lowest levels of religiosity and the older the cohort went the older you looked at there the older the banding the more religious people were and as time has gone on when you looked at the same age banding uh, the the level of religiosity decreased over time so that i think the the 18 to 27 band in the latest it's like 65 percent of people declared no religion but here's the thing it's not just that as we get older, we become more religious. That's not what the statistics have shown. What the statistics have shown is that whatever cohort you're in, as you move through the years, that level of religiosity or irreligiosity remains. So that the reason that the, uh, the, the levels of religiosity are dropping is because those cohorts are marching on. The people that were forming the 50 to 60 sort of category 40 years ago, they've dead, they've dropped off the far end and they've been replaced by younger people who have maintained their level of irreligiosity. Um, that's probably about all I want to say on this. That's about all the analysis that I really want to give. It's really worth watching the YouTube video that the Office of National Statistics have done on this, not least because the woman who narrates through it all. If you've ever wondered what a Welsh robot would sound like. I think that she's well worth listening to because it will give you some idea. Uh, very interesting survey results, but just remember that key point. If people use the survey data uh, as in some way evidencing what percentage of people believe in God in the UK, it's not intended to do that. The Office of National Statistics admit that it doesn't do that. Don't let anybody get away with that. Thank you for watching this video and, uh, and let everybody know about this because it's quite interesting stuff. Bye for now.